everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening for the first of three community engagements uh, for the New Spirit River Lodge. My name is Tracy Wells and I'm a project manager here at Berry Architecture. And I am Isaac Martinez and I'm an architect here at Berry Architecture and Associates. Behind the camera, we have Tracy Evans, our community engagement coordinator that will be helping us out as well. Tonight, we're looking forward to getting your input to help us define the social architecture for this project. This agenda for tonight's presentation is a Zoom refresher, introduction to today's topic, community input, and wrap up. Before we get going with the event, I'll go over a few logistics. Given the challenges of doing a community engagement remotely, we are going to keep everyone muted. And you can use the chat function or raise your hand function if you'd like to ask a question out loud. If you're on a desktop computer, the icons will look similar to the image on the left. And if you're on your smartphone or tablet, tap on the three dots and a menu will pop up with the chat and raise hand features. We have planned for an open discussion to gather your input on today's topics. As well, there should be a few minutes at the end just in case there's any additional questions. Lastly, if you have any technical difficulties during the presentation, we are recording the session and we'll be uploading it to our website within the next 24 hours. Before we get started, we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge all of the funding partners that you see on your screen who are contributing to this project. We would also like to give the Government of Alberta and the Grants Spirit Foundation representatives a chance to provide an opening remarks before we get started with the engagement. So if we have anybody from uh, the Government of Alberta to... Thank you, Isaac. Um, you, you can hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you, Monica. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to just uh, have a couple of comments. First of all, I want to thank, uh, of course, Isaac, you and your team in helping us um, participate in this very important uh, community engagement session. And, um, and then I also want to thank all the participants for uh, joining us this evening um, because everyone's input is very, very important. Um, this project is of course a collaboration between many funding partners as well as um, you know many partners across ministries within government of Alberta um, so uh, the the community engagement session as we are together here virtually uh, it is one of the first community engagement sessions we're doing virtually but uh, it is just the result of the environment we're in right now nonetheless uh, we're very excited to have everyone here and uh, and are looking forward to great conversation today um, and, and the great conversation in coming weeks. So um, again, I want, to, um, I, I, I want to just inform everyone that uh, your input is important um, through this initial planning process so that we can, um, we can gather this input as we're working through our way into the design of this very important project. Um, that's all I have, I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the table over to uh, someone. I think Judy, you were gonna speak next. Yes, it's me. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Yeah, so I want to thank you for giving um, us opportunity to provide some opening remarks today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Judy Coco Tyler Beckeris and I am the board chairman of the Grand Spirit Foundation. This is a very exciting day for Grand Spirit and I want to bring these opening remarks and a welcoming on behalf of our 12 member municipalities who support this project and it just exemplifies our dedication to meeting the housing and healthcare needs of our whole region. This process began about six years ago when, the group, when a group of five municipalities, today known as the G5, initiated a housing needs assessment. The contributions of Saddle Hills County, Birch Hills County, MD of Spirit River, Town of Spirit River, and the village of Rycroft were a springboard into action of replacing the now 50-year-old Pleasant Lodge. As you will see in the presentation later, it didn't stop there. The 94, 
the 92, I just added two more to the project, the 92 unit project added another level of, of assisted living to the 42 lodge units that were already at Pleasant View Lodge. Grand Spirit will manage that facility while a partnership with Alberta Health Services will be providing the nursing and the home care. And wait, that's not all. When this project was announced in 2019, there was, this was another opportunity for the community to rally once again with a re request to add senior indep independent living apartments to the site. This continuation will give full meaning to aging in place. Provision of multiple levels of housing and medical care on one site will mean that households will not have to be split apart when one will require greater care. Maybe they will just be split to be neighbors across the hall and not have to move to another community far away. Like I said, it's really very exciting and we are more than one step closer. We wouldn't be here this evening if it were not for many contributions, and Monica already talked about those. So I'm going to start from a local level and expand on our thank yous. So the contributions from G5 for the needs assessment and the purchase of land and additional funds so that we could begin this project and then additional money toward the 24 apartment use, units has been just astronomical. I want to thank the Grand Spirit Foundation, other member municipalities for all the support for this project when this wasn't in everyone's backyard. I want to thank Alberta Seniors in Housing for their support of this project. We have th three MLAs representing our foundation at the legislature. I want to thank them, to thank them for their support and, and representation. <sighs> I should take a breath, right? MLA Todd Lowen. MLA Tracy Allard, MLA and Finance Minister Travis Tapes. We have appreciated their voice for the North in Edmonton. Also, Alberta Health Minister Tyler Shandro for recognizing the needs of the North so that we could have an improved quality of life. We are so grateful to the three levels of funding partnership, federal with CMHC, provincial and local municipal governments. We are evidence of the blessings that come to a community when we all work together. I'm almost done. And last but not least, I want to call, and I want to call this woman our very own Honorable Alberta Seniors and Housing Minister Josephine Pond. I'm sure some of you are wondering like, where is she in the order of gratitude? Because I hadn't mentioned her, but I want to give her a special, almost hooray for Josephine today. <laughs> Early in her appointment as the Minister of Seniors in Housing, she had a choice to tour, to tour the province and familiarize herself with all of her portfolio. She came north. We met with her in Grand Prairie so that she could see our facilities. And in conversations while she was there about the Spirit River project, she challenged us. She challenged us to exercise all means and all avenues of financing and partnerships so that we could say we had done everything that we could for this project. We assured her that we had, and then we asked her, maybe not challenged her, but asked her if she could do everything that she could. A tour of the present Pleasant View Lodge would show her our very need. We invited, she came, she saw, and as they say, the rest is history. Once again, I wanna thank on behalf of the Grand Spirit Foundation, everyone for all of their thoughts, their prayers, every effort toward this project coming this far. And I wanna thank them ahead for all of the hard work that you will continue to do. So I want to say thank you very, very much. And I look forward to this presentation and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much for those opening remarks, uh, Monica and Yuri. So yeah, thank you. And yeah, we're all excited to, to, get, uh, to get started with some of this community engagement. Um, okay. So just to get going now, uh, I just want to say that our plan for of the community engagement sessions is to answer the big question. How does the built environment promote healthy living and sustainable communities? The answers to, to this question, all, all the questions that we're gonna be uh, talking about today, will, will drive our design decisions, 
to develop the program requirements and the schematic design for this project. Our goals for the community engagement sessions are to understand what is important to the community and the stakeholders to shape the project vision. During today's session, we will talk about the project background, uh, describe a little bit our design philosophy, and then we'll dive right into our main discussion as it relates to the site and the common amenities of the lodge that you, that you guys would like to see. So during this pre-award phase, uh, all the consultant team will gather all the stakeholder input to understand the requirements for the new facility to replace the existing Pleasant View Lodge in Spirit River, as already uh, been, been mentioned. As Judy mentioned, we'll be designing for a 92 suite lodge comprising of 40 lodge suites at level two care, 26 designated support living suites, level four, and 26 designated support living suites, level 4D. Additionally, this design will also include the schematic design for an additional building on site containing 24 senior self-contained units. Lastly, the building will be a multi-story building and the architectural design will blend into an existing Spirit River neighborhood on a greenfield site. So, so yeah, we wanna explain a little bit our design philosophy so, so we can all understand why it's so important to get this community input, right? Uh, the graphic that, uh, this graphic that you can see in your screen uh, provides a good representation of three elements that we always like to consider when designing new spaces. Starting with the physical architecture, uh, for our purpose here is the design of the built environment. That includes the interiors, the exterior of the building, the landscape architecture, all the physical elements that we actually can see. The social architecture is the conscious design of services and amenities to support interactions across the generation, cultures, and socioeconomic groups. That means that it's important for us to understand what's the background, the, the social uh, impact of this facility, so we can understand it, and then we can reflect that into the architecture. The economic and policy are the regulations and financial structures affecting a, a facility or any other business. So throughout these community engagement sessions, uh, we want to focus on the social architecture, right? As I said, as it will provide the backbone to the physical architecture for this project. So when we connect the social and the physical architecture together, we really become more design conscious and create really meaningful facilities. So to compile all the information that we, we need uh, to create uh, an architectural concept and understand the program requirements, we need your input to, to really understand, as I said, the social architecture, uh, starting with a series of questions that we're gonna get going pretty soon. And this question will be related to which indoor and outdoor common amenities should be considered for this new lodge uh, right now in this first session. And then we will work in our way down to questions related to the cultural background, the history, also, we will talk about some private, some private spaces of the lodge, and also we will dive really into the actual the resident suites in the next session. Now that we have the background information completed, we'll start our interactive part of this session. Just as a refresher, we're going to keep everyone muted, and you can use the chat function, or you can raise your hand uh, function if you'd like to ask your question out loud. If you're on a desktop computer, the icons will look similar to the ones on the image on the left. And if you're on your smartphone or tablet, tap the three dots and a menu will pop up with the chat and raise hand feature. For each question, we'll give about a minute or two to type in your first thoughts, and then we'll open up the mics to those who'd like to speak out loud. Plan is to spend about three or four minutes on each of the questions. Okay, so we can get started with the, with the input. So our first question for tonight would be, what are the important site or outdoor amenities uh, to you? What are the important site outdoor amenities to you that should be included uh, on, on this new facility? So take a couple of minutes to think about, uh, and you know, look at the images that we're gonna be showing uh, along the same questions. Those are just to kind of, uh, you know, get some thoughts going and, and yeah, Please uh, either raise your hand, speak out, or uh, provide your comments on the chat. Um, so what are some things that you would like to see? 
as outdoor uh, amenities for the facility. Again, as you see, right, the pictures in the screen shows, you know, potentially some uh, fitness equipment for the residents. We're starting to see some comments. Yeah, so uh, beautiful park spaces, trees, walking paths, a raised bed garden space. Uh, nice, yeah. Outdoor walking and activity areas, shaded benches and patios, garden boxes. Uh, from Denise, again, uh, shaded area, raised garden or flower beds, um, an area that can be used for walking. Yeah, walking paths, that's great, yeah. Um, smoking area or smoking room, uh, greenhouse. Yeah, greenhouse, a smoking area, okay, yeah, that's, that's important. Trees, lovely grounds, uh, sheltered or screened in outdoor gathering area. Um, agreement on the outdoor garden activities and a safe walking area. Seating for groups and for pairs to sit comfortably outside. Shrubs and flowers, shaded areas, outdoor games area. Um, indoor space for activities like dancing and exercise. Great. Yeah, those are all really good suggestions. And I think it's important to have spaces uh, outdoors that, that can allow for different types of activities. So that's great. Excellent. Yeah, we're, we have a good start right now with the first question. Uh, yeah, any other thoughts here on important outdoor amenities? Uh, you know, uh, say parking, uh, cover parking, uh, you know, we, somebody said a uh, garden areas, greenhouse, that's great. Adequate indoor and outdoor space for walking to do appropriate cardiac rehabilitation. Uh, activity room or rooms, a sunroom. Sunroom, okay. Yeah, some spaces to, to be able to use more than just one season, right? Excellent. Uh, adequate parking for tenants and visitors. Uh, underground parking and above ground parking, also adequate staff parking. Yeah, uh, we're talking about the site. It's important to locate parking areas accordingly uh, for staff, for visitors, for residents. Uh, that's that's good. Yeah. Uh, small chapel, well lit so it can accommodate evenings and winter. Uh, space for persons personal services like barber and hair salon. Okay, yeah. So yeah, as we're talking about, these are outdoor amenities, right? And it's great, yeah. I think uh, it will be able to accommodate, uh, you know, good parking areas, good uh, areas for, for gathering that can be outdoor, but also provide some shelter uh, is important, right? More considering the weather and, you know, we, we have such long winter, so that's great. Well, we have maybe another minute here for this first question. Any any other laws, uh, thoughts here on outdoor amenities that should be included uh, in, in the facility? Gathering rooms for clients to gather with a family group. If their room is not large enough, maybe this could be a rentable area. A covered walkway connecting Grandview Estates. Mm -hmm. Patio spaces, smoking shelter, a canteen or a convenience store. Coffee shop. Yeah, coffee shop can be outdoors, I guess. Great, excellent. So yeah, these are great, uh, great thoughts regarding uh, other amenity spaces. Walking paths, yeah, it's important about the walking paths to keep a good uh, you know, good health and maybe with some kind of some sort of destination. So, uh, excellent. Okay, I think we can um, we can move to the next question. So, do you prefer the facility to have an outdoor space that is private, or one that's accessible to all members of the community? Or perhaps it's a balance of both. 
any thoughts on your outdoor spaces and the level of privacy you're looking for? Well, yeah, it's just, this is a great question. So a couple of quick comments before we get into this question from the last question. Um, area for storage of snow removal from paths and parking areas, perhaps a barbecue or an outdoor fire gas area. Good, um, yeah, good, and then, good thoughts. Uh, a couple comments on this question, uh, balance of both for both comments there. Yeah, I think it's important, I guess, to have, uh, you know, some private areas as well for only residents, but maybe there's some 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 walking path that may be accessible to 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 the community right uh yeah we would like to hear what you think about more about that yeah with the walking paths that you mentioned um sometimes we've seen them where they're only on the inner portion of the building and it's really closed in just for the residents or perhaps it's walking paths that are um, available to the rest of the community as well yeah, and we're considering maybe connecting existing buildings too, right? We have a uh, system facilities that we want to connect on the side that should be able to create those those areas as well. A couple more, both uh, considers the needs of the residents, both for assisted living and the self-contained. Um, a grants on a balance uh, area that others in the community can come in so it doesn't seem isolated. Um, areas for one-on-one -on -one visits, a bigger outdoor area for a larger visiting session with a family, um, maybe to have a barbecue or a picnic with their loved ones, um, healing gardens for the residents, walking paths for both, and water features. Um, a gazebo, good quality in or outdoor furniture. Yeah. Private and shared. Yeah, I guess as I've been saying, I think uh, a balance of both is, 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 is important and is good uh, just to have those, uh, you know, able to, to bring the community, but also have some private areas for residents. Water feature is a good, uh, yeah, it's a nice element as well. Outdoor movie theater. Hey, that's a, oh, great, that's a great idea. idea. Yeah, well, great idea. Look at having some quiet spaces because some may just want to have a silent space to read or relax. Okay. Uh, agreement on the water features, maybe an outdoor artwork, or maybe outdoor artwork when water and with water and flowers. Yeah, that's um, a great, good, good thoughts. Yeah. Ensure for four season landscape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, excellent comments so far. Great. Absolutely. Fruit trees. Ooh. <laughs> that might have to go in the gazebo or in the gazebo, in the greenhouse. <laughs> um, spacing, consider challenges of today, i.e. COVID um, and outdoor visits. Yeah, I think we always need to be um, considerate of that and, and create, well, as we create these spaces, we should make them also flexible enough, I think, just to, in order to, to, to kind of have multiple uses of them, right? To be able to have different activities uh, on the outdoor areas and, 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 you know, have this different type of, of use, uh, uses and, and activities within them. So, great. Okay, excellent. That is a good feedback in terms of outdoor spaces uh, for the facility. Edible uh, one landscape. last one before we go on to the next question. Edible landscape. <laughs> okay. So the next question is going to be a poll. So you want to see the poll on your screen and you're going to be able to provide your, your answer to the questions just clicking in, on it. And uh, so the, the, the question relates exactly to some uh, environmental, env environmentally sustainable features. So we just wanna ask uh, you guys, uh, the, all the stakeholders, how important are environmentally sustainable design features to you for this project? We wanna know how, you know, what do you think about it? If it's important, uh, somewhat important, we wanna know what, what would be, how important is this for, for everybody? Uh, as we are looking to the design, we're gonna be exploring some sustainable features, but we wanna hear from you guys 
uh, what what it how important it is. So I'll give you just a few minutes to kind of kind of just click on your answer, submit it, and then at the end we're gonna uh, Tracy's gonna uh, let us know how. Yeah, what was the consent? Just, just uh, one, one last point of the last question. Somebody said bird houses and bird feeders. So yeah, that's a good, uh, yeah, that's a great feature to, to have on the, on the outdoors. So we've got about 45% uh, feedback in so far. So we'll give it another minute. Um, great. So some environmentally sustainable uh, design features could be solar panels, um, perhaps rainwater harvesting, zero scaping, which is more all about dry uh, versus kind of things that need to be watered all the time. Zero scaping is like rock gardens and ornamental grasses, etc. About 50% of you in there now. Um, so give it an, another minute or so here. Um, but yeah, just click on whichever um, point you agree with more and it all of your input is gathered here with us so one comment here uh landscape for sure uh, i think a combination of zero scaping and edibles like flowering trees they are very appreciative of some of the examples there. <laughs> sure. Okay, so how close we are, Tracy? Uh, we've got about 60% of the votes in there. So we're, right now it's seeming like the consensus is about somewhat important, sitting at 61% of the votes. Uh, second place is then extremely important uh, with 18%. Uh, five, or 15% for neutral. And then a time for 3% uh, for somewhat not important and extremely not important. A uh, couple other comments are, yes, great photos to simulate the idea, so thank you. And rain harvesting for gardens and landscape. So I think we'll I be good to call it there. So I'll end the poll for everyone and share it for everyone as well. So, so yeah, I just say Tracy. Yeah, I guess uh, the concerns like uh, is somewhat important. I think it's important as, as part of of this process. We we will go through see what are the the best uh, uh, sustainable design features that we could incorporate to the facility, right? And understanding the site, the location, uh, and with that, just kind of uh, yeah, try to to find the some of the features or the features that will make sense uh, into into for this project. So thank you. So we're now going to move on to some questions that are more focused on the interior common spaces of the lodge. So what are some important uh, elements of history and the culture of Spirit River that should be represented in the new feet in the new facility? And for those of you who may not know, uh, Spirit River was based on farming, ranching and a sawmill way back in the day. So maybe some other elements that you can think of or perhaps uh, cultural things that could be uh, brought into the facilities. So first comment here for this question, uh, central piece. Yeah, for us it's important to ask these questions because as we can understand more of the history and culture and the background of the of, of the area, right? We can we can incorporate some of these elements into the facility. Uh, maybe maybe with some materials, maybe with some colors, maybe within the the actual physical architecture of it, right? Uh, how it's going to look. So uh, that's why we we like to understand what are some of the things that we can maybe bring as maybe as a feature or some 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 of these kind of uh, elements into the facility. Uh, keeping the facility name, it's a uh, 60 year old, it's 60 years old, uh, the Pleasant View Lodge. Okay. Um, 
photos and artwork from local artists, possibly a revolving artist show such as the QE11 Hospital Gallery does. Uh, his, oh sorry, history collage wall, some old timbers from the old building as accent okay. pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great idea. Western terminus of the NRA, sorry, N-A-R, <laughs> acknowledge veteran history, possibly pieces from the Spirit River Museum, uh, borrowed, quotation, uh, quotations there, uh, to display. Yeah, that's a good thought too, you know, bringing some of those uh, from the some museums to people to see. Yeah, yeah. That could be almost like revolving art work kind of display as well. Yeah. Place for children's artwork. It's a great idea. Grandkids make the best artwork. <laughs> well, that's a good way to bring the community too, right? So I think those are great thoughts. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Self Peace Archives has lots. Yeah, it's great because all this kind of brings, uh, you know, uh, creates some sense of identity of the facility and a sense of belonging, right, for all the residents that, that are there. So, uh, yeah, this is this is really good to hear all these thoughts uh, for us to, to consider. Uh, barn doors incorporated in design for the or with large wood rafters. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, consider asking current residents of the Pleasant View Lodge some of their backgrounds and what's important to them. Excellent. Yeah, definitely that's, uh, that's, that's important and it's going to relate to our next question a little bit, but yes. Understanding the history of the existing residents, that's a good way to find. They would also know the history of the area if they've grown up in Spirit River as well. Probably yeah. tell some great stories and we may need to set up some interviews there. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I think we have another minute for this question. Any other thoughts? Oh, another one in. Uh, historic pictures of what the area and towns uh, looked like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. How, how the evolution of the town. That's, that would be a great to have a collage like that as well. Yeah, um, like Isaac said, a then and now feature. Mm -hmm. Great, again, I just say, as you guys start thinking more as we move forward with the next question, you still have a lot of opportunities to provide your questions submitted to us through our website. So, so yeah, if you guys, uh, yeah, if there's anything else that would be, um, Excellent to hear. So again, moving to the next question. Uh, again, that relates to some of that. If there are any important feature in the current uh, lodge, uh, Pleasant View Lodge that, that should be accom accommodated in the new lodge? Is this anything from the history, uh, from the existing lodge that maybe we could bring to the new facility? You know, just as an example, in some of our projects, we've seen like maybe from the existing lodge, they bring uh, maybe a, a stained glass uh, feature window, right? And then we'll bring it to the new facility. Uh, I don't know, is there anything right now in the existing facility that, that has some good, uh, important uh, value? Sounds like they also have a stained glass window. Um, and keep the seniors library and meeting rooms. Kind of room window, okay. Um, an apple tree, the kind of room window, yeah. Okay. Well, and somebody already mentioned maybe keeping this, the, the same name, right? So yeah, it's some sort of those elements, maybe it's a special tree, maybe that special window or that special feature that somehow we could we could bring into the new facility. Those are those are great thoughts. As you mentioned too, some of those comments are straight from Pleasant View Lodge as well. So mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, basically, everything in the pr uh, present lodge should be incorporated in the new, i.e. the Kanda room, uh, recreation room, etc. Not necessarily the types of spaces. I think we'll definitely do the types of spaces that you have. We're talking maybe about architectural features in this case or um, elements of, let's say, uh, a quilt that somebody put has, has put together and is displaying. Um, those kind of elements that we can actually physically take. Okay, great. Um, relating back to the previous question, having artwork including local quilting. Well, that'd be great. Okay, I think we come up to, to the next question now. So what are some hobbies and interests that you or someone uh, you know has that could be accommodated in the new lodge, uh, such as art studio, gallery? We've already started to name some, so I'm not gonna give any hints yet. Maybe you can come up with some more. Well, just some of the hobbies that we're thinking, you know, as, as, you know, where is uh, somebody say about art, right? So uh, it sounds like there's a lot of, uh, you know, people interested in art, right? So is there any hobbies within the community that, that you know, that residents like to do uh, so, so we can incorporate spaces uh, for those type of hobbies? And while everybody's thinking there, one last comment from our previous question. Uh, Pleasant View Lodge says they want to keep the fish tank or have a bigger one. Okay. okay, excellent. Good feature. Yeah. Now for this question, uh, a lounge on the top floor to allow a view of the valley, uh, a wood shop. Oh, and sorry, again, um, continue from, I believe the last question, continue with Pleasant View Painters. Oh. Or possibly this question. Uh, a games room, indoor garden area. Yeah, that would be great to be able to connect maybe at the outdoor garden area with an indoor garden area. Happy hour time. Good idea. Happy hour time. That sounds like <laughs> a pub or something like that. That's right. Uh, separate family kitchen, puzzle tables, mm -hmm. quilting, indoor garden or seed starting area. Okay, yeah. I wonder if there's any crafters out there who need a craft room, perhaps. Indoor courtyard, garden, lots of natural lighting. Well, I think, yeah, we've seen uh, here are a lot of good uh, examples of different activities that could be incorporated. The craft room, yeah, uh, as Tracy was mentioning, that could be a good one as well. And uh, I think, yeah, we'll, I think the important is to make these spaces flexible enough, as I was talking before, to accommodate these different types of facility, of activities and be more like a multi-purpose room, right? For, for mm -hmm. some of these uh, kind of activities, yeah. Kitchen capacity for resident participation. Craft room, sunroom, kid-friendly room. What about a dance floor area? Great um, idea. Floor. Every room should have a balcony. Men golfers would love a golf simulator. Okay, balcony. A movie room. Oh, yeah, movie. We, we, we have another movie room, so maybe an indoor movie room, okay. As much as we'd like to stay outside year round and watch those movies, so. We might need an indoor space for it as well. <laughs> Low curling. Okay. Oh, that's a good idea. So I think we'll move on to the next question. What do you think, Isaac? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so for the next question is about how we can make the family beaches more memorable in the new facility. Uh, what can we do to, we kind of spaces or amenities inside the lodge, uh, which type of common amenities can we create to make, uh, you know, family business more memorable for, for everybody? So well, we'd like to take your thoughts. Oh, sorry. 
while you type those out, just a couple last minute uh, comments on the last question. Uh, shuffleboard, a painting okay. class, Bible study area, church, chapel, uh, woodworking, lawn bowling, uh, horseshoes. Um, and then in relation to our current question now, um, again, a kid friendly room. Kid friendly room is right, yeah, maybe some private areas as like that, right, for, for families to visit. Yeah, that could be great. Indoor and outdoor spaces to engage with families. Yeah, maybe there's a little family dining area, right, a more private for a, a, for a private uh, event. So those are, yeah. Yeah, similar to the comment that just came in, family visit room with a kitchen. Okay. Those are all great ideas. I love the idea of a kid's room, like for everybody can get together. Family room, of course, but yeah. yeah. Um, Agreement that with a family visit room that can also be booked. Okay. Um, a fireplace area, yes to the family kid-friendly room, maybe also a space to allow for some pets. Okay. Yeah, those are good thoughts. Well, and, and I guess, right, these are spaces that could be accessible uh, to, to maybe with the community and there's some more private, some more public. So, you know, in, in, in the facilities, as we're talking about common areas, amenity spaces for indoors and outdoors, uh, it's good to have the balance of both, right? Some more public, some more private for, for this type of gatherings. Um. Coffee and tea should be available at all times, as well as comfortable seating in the family area so it doesn't seem institutional. Definitely. Definitely, because this is a home, right? We always have to keep that in mind. Open dining areas as well. Yeah. I think those are all great thoughts. So yeah, we can move the, yeah, I think we've got a few more thoughts maybe and then move to the next question. And snacks. <laughs> Coffee, tea and snacks, very important. 24 hours a day. <laughs> um, a dining area that visitors could possibly purchase a lunch or supper from. Um, okay. and a games cupboard or a library. Okay, great. So next question. Is Paul, uh, how important is it to you that the lodge has a strong connection to nature? Again, you'll see that poll pop up on your screen and we're just looking for the level of importance of uh, how connected to the outdoors you want to be. So for example, that could be views to the outside, indoor gardens, water features. We've already heard those kind of comments, so it's sounding like this is things that are pretty important. Uh, other things to consider, interior finishes that incorporate organic shapes, uh, colors, and textures, perhaps. So while everybody's kind of giving uh, their answers on that poll there, uh, one last comment from the last question is a computer area. Mm. And okay, yeah. A comment for this question. Yes, indoor greenery, trees, gardens, and natural light um, make it a peaceful place. So we've got about 70% of the votes in now, so give it another minute there. Yeah, that's quick, excellent. Oh, an atrium. Yeah, that's a great idea, that's a great thought. Mm -hmm and good views to the outdoors as well. Yeah, I think it's important to, to keep that connection, right, with the outdoors. So some, somehow we're able to bring the outside inside 
uh, as you people say, outdoor atriums, maybe um, gardens, sunrooms. Yeah, those are great ways. Um, consider skylights or star watching areas. Hmm. Like that idea. Yeah. Okay, so we've got 74% of the votes in. Uh, it's looking like right now we've got a consensus. 53% uh, say it's extremely important. 33% uh, somewhat important. And then 13% for neutral and another 3% for not or somewhat not important. Um, another comment in uh, the client rooms would have big enough windows to see out of. Um, there are lots of beautiful views out there to see. Couple more seconds here. I think it's finding the balance between having outdoor in and still having the inside feeling cozy and in the dead of winter when it's blizzarding outside, you're not reminded that it's blizzarding outside. You know, you can have that warm and cozy feeling uh, being inside and comfy as well. So it's nice to find, we'll have, it's easy to find that balance really. But yeah, having that connection to nature. Yeah, big windows and rooms, that's important. So I can see that uh, some of the comments, yeah. Low rise windows so that those who are sitting can still see outside. Of course. Yeah. Great lots, comment, yeah. Lots of views to the outside, the south and west for the sunset and uh, yes, the stars and moon are important as, important as well. So I think we'll go ahead and end the poll in there and I'll share the res results with everyone. So as I said, uh, consensus 54% uh, extremely important, 32% somewhat important, 12% uh, neutral and 2% somewhat not important. Um, every room should have great views of trees. Okay, yeah. Keep that in mind. Ray, thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so for the next question would be, uh, what types of spaces are important for refuge and privacy? Um, so just to kind of explain a little bit more, we just want to know uh, what types of space are important to have maybe a small intimate seating areas, uh, maybe some other type of amenities as we've been hearing too, uh, just throwing one there, maybe a library space. What are those other kind of types of spaces uh, that would be good to have as common amenities there in the inside of the facility? Well, I think about those just two last comments from the last uh, question. So ensure with the big windows that it's not cold. Um, so make sure that there's good heating and insulation ratings. Okay. And then on the flip side, ensure that we have AC as there's a lot of window sun. Okay. So any thoughts for this question about the uh, spaces, smaller spaces, more private spaces in the facility? Uh, coffee areas to sit with a friend. Okay. A library with comfortable chairs. I did see somebody did have their hand raised there for a second, but I missed the name and you, ra you took your hand down. So if you'd <laughs> like to still speak, you are more than welcome to. I'm sorry if I missed you. <laughs> yeah, feel free to talk. <laughs> yeah, anybody, please feel free to, to give your thoughts. Sometimes typing in quickly in these situations is too much pressure, so feel free to, uh, to chat. Um, another one, spiritual room or quiet room for spiritual time. A counseling area with a, for um, like being with a friend or a minister. Okay. Uh, agreement with both a library and spiritual room. Library, spiritual room. Uh, 
Um, ensure that the private rooms are not dark boxes. Of course. Definitely not, no. A concentration room for home care, a computer room. Okay. So yeah, we'll be listening to great spaces, uh, you know, uh, chapels, spiritual rooms, uh, some library spaces, small, small areas for seating with some self furnishing. So that's great. Um, sorry, um, concentration room was actually meant to be consultation room ah. for home care. <laughs> I was yeah, wondering yeah, what okay. they were concentrating on. <laughs> Uh, a water aerobics, so maybe a small indie pool, meeting space. Designated quiet areas. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, couple last comments here. A uh, private room with home care for bathing, so tub rooms. Um, would this building be an end of life facility at all? Um, so that might be a more of a comment for maybe our foundation or so we can definitely find that answer out for you. Fitness room. A uh, sleeping room for visiting families, fitness room. Okay. So I think, uh, yeah, those are great inputs, great, uh, you know, smaller uh, spaces, common areas on the facility. Why don't we move to the next question? Um, okay, so how can we stimulate appetites and foster healthy relationships during mealtimes? Uh, such as having the servery open to the dining room instead of small uh, pass through from the kitchen to the dining room. Um, we've seen that that could support uh, building strong relationships with the staff who prepare and serve the meals. Uh, another example is provide smaller dining room and kitchens to give people the choice of where they want to have their meal uh, in a small setting or in a larger setting um, and create hospitality uh, feel to the dining room. So there's some concepts there. Um, making sure that there is more space for walkers and wheelchairs. Definitely, yeah, there needs to be enough circulation for, for walkers, for wheelchairs. And right now with COVID, right, we need to ensure that there's enough space as well right now to... For sure. Also to tables that are high enough for scooters. Good okay. thought. Good, good food. The food itself will help stimulate that appetite. <laughs> bright inviting areas definitely yeah nice open space for the dining area right uh, good food cooked on site uh, good lighting and incorporate greenery mm -hmm. resident input on menu plans and me uh, meal preferences mm -hmm. um, having a menu maybe sure I've seen in other uh, um, lodges, they put up a menu board so you can see for the week kind of what's being planned out. Uh, have the eating areas more like a home or a restaurant. Um, if you're looking at two different areas to eat, um, that's a possibility. Yes, good food, fast, fast and full meals. Um, focus on quality, not quantity. Continuing to recognize the likes and dislikes of the residents. Romantic candlelit corner. Oh, I love that idea. <laughs> I do. Great idea here for electronic menus. Maybe they're linked back to the resident rooms on their TV or uh, uh, having a high tech building. Just like a hotel kind of setting, I've seen that where you can order your room service that way. 
go through the menu on, on your TV. Um, maybe lighting that can be adjusted, like on a dimmer. True. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, so those are great thoughts and really that having a nice uh, open dining space, right, will kind of really enhance the, the, the experience and the relationship during the meal times and definitely something to, to consider. So we move to the next question. Uh, we don't One have last any... quick comment and then we'll okay. move on. Uh, ability to order a meal delivered to your room or the ability to purchase a meal for your guest and maybe an outdoor dining area. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, some, some sort of connection with the indoor dining and having the ability to have in another area that would be, that's something, yeah, good idea to consider. So, um, this is our, our last question. Uh, I just wanna ask, how can we encourage physical activity among the residents inside of the new lodge? Uh, we wanna get your thoughts on what would be some good ideas to, to encourage the, the physical activity, right? Uh, we know that having exercise or shown that exercise helps to prevent disease, lower the risk of falls and improve the mental health. So, so yeah, we want to, to know how can we, what are your thoughts to, in order to achieve that? So an exercise room with equipment. Yeah, okay, yes. Have someone come in and do yoga or stretches. Uh, ensure again that there's adequate indoor and outdoor walking. Yeah, yeah, an indoor walking pad in the facility, excellent, yeah. We did hear the little water aerobics comment as well. Uh, we need an instructor that gets people going an outdoor fire pit that can be used season long, so maybe to roast marshmallows or drink hot chocolate around. Okay. Um, maybe a family member or a recognizable face is leading the exercises with, with the residents. Walking paths around certain areas of the building, in-house activities coordinator to have different things planned for each day. Um, nice room size to accommodate not moving tables if that can happen. Weekly visits from the elementary students nearby to do activities with. Hey, okay, excellent. Those guys don't get you going, nothing will. <laughs> Again, indoor walking tracks. Yeah, indoor walking tracks, maybe with a destination feature, right? Maybe going through a destination so you can encourage to walk somewhere. So that's, that's good. Uh, and assigned activity instructors. I think also having uh, friendly, senior friendly uh, staircases as well. Encourage people to head up to the other floors and to the other spaces as well. Yeah, well-designed staircase, that's, that's definitely a good, good comment, yeah. Some walking loops, as you guys said, maybe some interior, exterior loops that can connect that to encourage some of the uh, walking, uh, you know, creating destinations mm -hmm. along the way to maybe some spe special room or a sp activity space. So yeah, those are great ways to, to encourage the, uh, some physical activity. Link walkways to different doorways so that you could have long or short walks. Mm -hmm. Long ramps instead of stairs. Okay. Have a special day or evening set aside as date night. They have a lovely meal and then dancing after. Those who are single can enjoy the music and enjoy a glass of beer or wine. Okay, yeah, sounds fun. It does sound fun. <laughs> We're missing that right now, aren't we? <laughs> uh, make the walks interesting so they would see the finish, er, the fish tank and the photos and the artwork on the wall. Team up residents, it's always great to have a buddy to encourage each other dances. Yeah, those are all great comments. Visiting musicians.
Okay, great. No, I think this has been, uh, yeah, lots of good, uh, good suggestions and good feedback uh, mm -hmm. from everybody. A couple last comments in here. In-house events like movie night uh, or other performers, Dancing with the Stars competitions, uh, rooms with sound equipment installed, Friday night bands. Awesome. Okay, great, thank you. So this wraps up the engagement for this evening. Made it all the way to the end. We encourage everyone to join us next week on February 4th when we'll be discussing neighborhoods and resident suites. This presentation will be uploaded on the project website within the next 24 hours and the questions asked from this evening will be available through the online questionnaire which will be open from Friday until Monday at noon. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for your input. This was a great first session, uh, really good participation, uh, great feedback, great thoughts. Uh, yeah, we just encourage everybody to, 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 yeah, to join us next week as well, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, feel free to, to kind of uh, provide your, your comments through the chat or just speak out during the session. So that would be great just to, to hear other voices other than just uh, faces and myself. So thank you again and yeah, have a great night. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Lots of thank yous and thank you for all the great questions to, to all of us. Oh, and uh, Monica here would just like to say something. So go ahead now, Monica. Yeah, just wanted to, just on behalf of the province, I just wanted to thank everyone for uh, sharing your great ideas. We collected a lot of good feedback and uh, I do look forward to similar engagement in the next session. And also I wanna thank Barry Architecture uh, for running a highly engaging session. Uh, this, this worked out quite well. Um, I know I was a little bit worried about it initially, but it worked out really well. Um, and if there are other ideas, we're always uh, interested in hearing them. So feel free to reach out to us. Thank and you. and share the link and uh, tell your friends. <laughs> and as Tracy had mentioned, the online questionnaire does have all of the questions that were asked this evening. Um, so that can be accessed on the project website under the session one uh, hyperlink. So please, if you've got more feedback that you'd like to give us more input on some of these questions, Fill that out, send the link to all of your friends to get them to fill it out as well. Um, everything you provide will be, uh, will be gathered, so. And it's confidential, you don't have to put your name on it. Yeah, all anonymous. <laughs>